Now, when you guys first heard the audiobook for Local Custom, how did you feel with Michael Shanks? I mean, I, obviously these are not the voices that you originally heard inside your head for the characters. Did they, did they somehow seem to take on a life of their own with that? Or? It, it was kind of, um, kind of freaky hearing the book read, read by somebody else. It, um, <laughs> we we have we had we have given readings that dozens yes, and dozens. We've read read our books, but right. I've never and had anybody read my book to me. And yeah. it, that that w that was odd. And of course, it wasn't a complete uh, a complete radio play production. And listening to how he was able to differentiate the characters without he doing a whole a lot of voice tricks. No, he, he wasn't did a really good job. job. Like you know, I'm not sure whether I ever told you. Do you know his, who his favorite character was in that book? It was Petrella. He loved Petrella. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this I is the one he wanted to meet. <laughs> no, I thought she was a really <laughs> interesting lady. Um, you don't get that bitchy without, you know, a lot of experience <laughs> behind you. Yeah, it was kind of sweet. You know, and Michael likes rough, a little bit right. rough, right. rough. And Petrella can certainly do that. But I was kind of just wondering. And I actually... I am a huge fan of your stuff. I mean, without a question of a doubt. And strangely enough, one of the, cr the races that you created that I love is the clutch. I was wondering, how did you come up with that? That was a collaboration. That was a double. That was there, there's a double a double trail leading to to Edger and, and his clutch. Steve, Steve had mentioned earlier that I had um, been working with Dalton and Mary for a long time. And I had, I've been making up stories using using those characters um, since I was you know, 12, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and started late. I started late, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I got hooked on Davy Crockett for right. a while. Um, and what would happen is that there was a group of aliens that I um, creatively called the Green People. And the Green People were really, really, really alien. And whenever I needed like to give the story a kick, or send it off in, in an interesting direction, the green people would arrive, do something incomprehensible, and leave, and the heroes would have to, to deal with it and clean up the mess. Okay, now we had, when we, when we met, I, I was much more published than Sharon had been. I had a number of stories and amazing, and I had been working on novels, and I had, I had been really moving, uh, attempting to move in my own direction, and I had created a character named uh, Honest John. Honest John. And Honest John was an insurance salesman. A great character. Honest John was an insurance salesman, uh, which meant in this particular world he was an insurance salesman. And one side what meant it was said insurance, and the other side of his card said assassination. And um, that was part of his insurance for you. You know, if you're having really big problems, sometimes he'll just sell you regular insurance. But if you really need insurance, he'll take out your trouble. Or if somebody, oh, or if you yeah. thought somebody would be gunning for you, he would he would engage to protect you, and that was also part of his insurance business. And so, and he was a large individual, and, and we were working through Agent of Change, and Sharon had been doing her section and got to a point where she wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen next. And if you haven't read Agent of Change, and said to him, "This is where the green people would come, and something something incomprehensible would happen, and the story would bounce off of that." If you have if you haven't read Agent of Change, you you. Probably we don't want the hotel people to read Agent Change. No, we don't want the hotel people to read that. <laughs> However, there, there, there's a very... Okay, yeah, a very that's strange. <laughs> uh, there, there's, a, there's a very interesting point at which uh, our, our protagonists need to make a quick getaway. And in the middle of this quick getaway, which they have no idea what they're going to do once they get to the bottom, they walk, and there is Edger. And Edger is... A clutch turtle. A clutch turtle. And um, it, it kind of came together, the combination of Sharon's Green People and our, my very, very large and inscrutable character, and um, there, there they were. And, and, and um, in order to make an escape with the clutch, the clutch are sort of kind of like nine-foot turtles. Um, as a matter of fact, Karen's call them the turtles. The turtles. Um, to make an escape with this creature, um, Means you walk very slow, you run very slowly <laughs> to all exits. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, no one is going to stop you because nine foot tall armored creature. Um, they will walk through you if they need to. And they're quite capable of walking out the door or through the door, depending on. And they can talk loud enough to flatten you too. Yes, that's there, there's that extra added feature. <laughs>
Which so they're very good friends to have. Yes, they're excellent. <laughs> and very bad enemies. That, that too, because they are very patient and they, they will finish the job. And, and they very, very long-lived, yes. Yes, <laughs> this is absolutely true.